radioactive materials turn into something else and emit radiation. Alpha particles, beta particles, gammas. The key in understanding radiation is not to ask the question, is that radioactive? But rather, ask the question, what kind of radioactive dose, what kind of dose am I getting? Dose is a unit of energy absorbed per unit mass. And the reason that's important is because if the energy was absorbed, if the alpha particle was stopped, it was stopped by something, by you. And some part of you, when that energy goes into it, can break. Many times it's simply a water molecule, and then it goes back together and nothing happens. But if it was a part of your DNA, particularly in a cell that was dividing, that could be much worse. So dose is radiation absorbed per unit mass. To be able to tell what types of radiation are dangerous, in other words, how much dose is dangerous, we have to quantify the dose from a number of different objects. The unit, the standard international unit, is the sievert, SV. It turns out that one sievert is actually a lot of radiation. This is a joule absorbed per kilogram. There's a more common unit, at least in the United States, go figure, called the REM, the radiation equivalent mammalian. Because many tests are done in animals and all us mammals are the same, we got the same organs, right? So the REM. And the conversion is that one sievert is equal to 100 REM. Now, 100 rem and a sievert, like I said, is a lot of dose. We tend to talk about one millirem because it turns out that from natural sources, you, me, everyone else on the planet gets about one millirem per day. So it's a nice convenient unit, one millirem per day, that's one day of natural background. If I want to convert this, I'm going from rem to something that's a thousandth of a rem. This turns out to be 10 micro, 10 to the minus 6, sieverts. So we can fill in the, uh, the rest of the things too, right? One micro sievert is 0 0.1 millirem. Um, what about some other common ones? What if we get up all the way to one milli sievert? Okay, one milli sievert is 100 millirem. These are the units we're going to use. Now, what about the dose that we actually get? This graphic is a great representation. So, here we see the breakdown of the different radioactive doses. And it comes in both what you could call natural and man-made. The, the group here, you know, the red and the green and these, these are your natural sources, the ones that are up here on the top of the chart. And there adds up to, right now, about 320 millirem comes from natural sources. I told you it was about a millirem a day. I know there's 365 days, eh, pretty close. And there's some variability on this. That's from your natural sources. But that's only about half the chart. There's also 300 millirem from man-made sources. Most of those being medical procedures. This is the number for the United States. It's funny. These are the statistics from around now, maybe 2010. I first started teaching about this in the 1980s, before many of the types of nuclear medicine or computed tomography, CT scans, and other things existed. Then, in those days, the average dose was pretty much just the natural background. We maybe said 360 or so. Over the years, in fact, only over 20 years, this extra man-made dose has creeped up there. 
Interestingly, cancer rates have not. So this type of level, the hundreds of millirems, things under a rem, these are not things that end up causing cancer, as we'll describe shortly. But first, let's talk about the natural dose. That little blue silver there, that little blue sliver is what they call things from the ground. And that's about 15 or so, maybe 20 millirem per year. What hurts you from the ground? Uranium, thorium, little bits of radioactive material that are ubiquitous across the earth. And if you live in a brick house, stone has bits of radioactive material in them, they emit radiation. The next sliver, the yellow one, that is from internal organs. That's probably 20 to 25 millirem. That's the potassium in your body. Potassium has a particular isotope, potassium-40, and it is radioactive. Very long half-life. It's existed since the planet existed, that amount of potassium. If you didn't have any potassium all in your body, you would die. You need potassium and sodium to be able to regulate the channels in your cells in terms of the fluids coming in and out of them. So that's 15 to 25 millirem. The green slice. The green slice is from outer space. Cosmic rays. Things left over from the Big Bang, from stars exploding, constantly bathing the Earth. This is also 20 to 25 MR. You really can't get away from this stuff. If you didn't have the potassium in you, you die. You have to live someplace, you know, on the Earth. And unless you, I don't have any idea how you escape cosmic rays. This, of course, doesn't add up to the whole 320 for natural dose. The large red area right here, that red area is from radon. And that might be a whole 200 millirem. So radon is one of the noble gases. If you look on the far right of the periodic table, you've got helium, neon, argon, krypton, and then radon. But it turns out that radon is radioactive. And because it's radioactive, it will emit alphas, betas, and gammas. If you breathe it, you then will get exposed. But you know, because it's a noble gas, radon does not combine with many things. It's not going to become part of your body. The problem is that the thing it decays into, the thing radon changes into, does become part of your body. And that is where you can get the radiation dose and the radiation danger. This number, 200 millirem, is an average. There are a variety of places across the United States, across the world, that have almost no radon dose. And there are many others that have a much higher radon dose. It's very good in some home to check the radon level. It didn't come from anything man-made. You're not on some nuclear waste dump. It's there because of the radioactive material that's in the planet itself. Because of the uranium, thorium, and other materials that are in the Earth, if you happen to be near a slightly larger concentration, if your house is extremely well insulated, if the gases that leak into it from your deep basement never get out, you could have a radon problem. What you should do is have it monitored, at least monitor it once, add some ventilation, Make sure that you have airflow, and you'll be fine. This is the 320. This is the natural background. I should say this is the natural background around sea level. Remember these cosmic rays? If you happen to live at a higher elevation, let's say you lived at um, one mile high. Why do I pick a mile? Well, in the U.S., there's a city called Denver, which is the mile-high city. Its elevation is almost exactly one mile above sea level. Albuquerque, New Mexico is a similar elevation. And those places have a lot more cosmic rays. Instead of 20 to 25 millirem, they might be in the 
75 to 100 millirem per year from the cosmic background. They've got a mile less atmosphere protecting them, less shielding. And again, if you compare cancer rates on a sea level city, New York, to the same demographics in a city as of Denver at a mile high, same cancer rates. This added amount is not tremendously dangerous, but it is present. And that's important to understand when you try to quantify radiation. If someone says, oh my God, you're going to get an extra 50 millirem a year, well, don't faint. Just pretend you live in Denver. What about the man-made stuff? What about this other 300 millirem? The largest group in here, the light blue, is from CT scans, computed tomography. When they take a bunch of x-rays of you so they can get a 3D picture of what's in your organs. You've got this next group in the gray. That's probably mostly from things like cancer treatment, nuclear medicine treatment, when they try to shrink tumors with radiation. You have the area here, which is from gastrointestinal tracts, an upper GI, a lower GI, often when you take some type of radioactive dye. You've got just your sort of standard x-rays here. All of this is medical procedures. And if a doctor says, you know, I think we can save your life by doing this test and trying to figure out what's wrong, do it. Yes, you might get a few extra 100 millirems, maybe even much more than that for a given procedure. But it isn't the radiation dose that's going to kill you. It might be the thing they're trying to discover that's going to kill you in the first place. And then finally, you get very, very small levels here. Consumer items, right? These are trivial and tiny. And that's there for a good reason. The government has a regulation that says you can have, as a member of the general public, 100 millirem per year of excess dose. That's not if you're a radiation worker. That's just, hey, a truck was moving along. It had smoke detectors in it or lantern mantles or one of the other common radioactive substances. And um, you happen to be parked next to it for a month. What kind of dose could you get? 100 millirem. Way under these types of background numbers. And so there are some consumer goods that might have some radioactive materials. Actually, I can demonstrate a few of them. There are a variety of things that are used in everyday life, like a smoke detector. Should you fear the radiation from a smoke detector? Absolutely not. The radiation part is actually this tiny little cell here. And the way a smoke detector works is that the radiation, the alpha particles, from this radioactive substance complete an electric circuit. Remember, they're charged, they're alpha particles, they're helium nuclei with plus two charge. If smoke gets in the way, the alpha particles are stopped. They're very easy to stop. Even smoke in the air will stop them. That means the circuit is interrupted and the buzzer goes off. Those alpha particles cannot get through smoke. They certainly aren't going to get through the plastic shielding and somehow hurt you because you have a smoke detector in your house. If you take it apart and you manage to eat the little radioactive piece inside, well, okay, maybe that's bad. But there's lots of things you could take apart and eat that would be bad. Here's another example. This is called a lantern mantle. And I was a Boy Scout, so you go camping and you camp and you have some type of of gas lantern or maybe a steel gas lantern and from the fumes or from the kerosene or, or these days from a propane tank, you can get light. Wonderful. If I just had a flame, it would be yellow. But if I had some kind of substance in the thing that would actually be glowing, this mantle that you set on fire that has the, the flame contained inside of it, and if you made it out of a very large element, one that had many electrons, like thorium, then you get a nice, white, crisp, bright light. Turns out, of course, there's an isotope of thorium. Actually, most thorium is radioactive. And because of that, the lantern mantle can give you 5 millirems per hour. Again, you probably don't want to eat it. 5 millirems an hour would add up, certainly higher than your background of 1 millirem a day. Here's another example. Salt substitute. 
potassium chloride instead of sodium chloride. And it is, of course, because it's potassium, slightly radioactive. Probably one of the most interesting are these orange plates. They're called Fiesta Ware. They were built in the 1947, of late, late 40s. They have this pretty orange color. Um, uh, because they're made with uranium. The glaze you put on is a uranium salt. And uh, this dose from this plate is, uh, whoa, uh, 10 millirem an hour. Okay? Now, if you have this up in your shelf, yeah, it's probably fine. But think about what happens when you eat food. Let's say you've got your knife, right? Let's, here's my plate, and I got some meat and potatoes, and I have my knife and, my, and some gravy, right? And I will take my knife and cut on here. What am I really doing microscopically? I'm probably knocking some of the top surface off. What's the top surface? The radioactive glaze. Then, of course, you grab your fork, you sop it up with gravy, you are going to sop up all the tiny little chips of the glaze as well, and then you eat it, putting the radioactive substance into your body where, of course, it would be the most harmful.